I'm very excited to celebrate my first B4SAR day with all of you. Please visit www.b4sar.org to show your support for everything you love about SAR. During the upcoming holiday of Shavuot, we'll be marking the anniversary of the giving of the Torah on Harsinai, over 3,000 years ago. As a parent and educator, I believe that the episode of the giving of the Torah and the subsequent sin of the Egel HaZahav, the golden calf, provide us with a lesson in the Midah of Savlanut, the virtue of patience. The Jewish people had been redeemed from the horrors of Egyptian slavery through a slew of miracles, the likes of which had never been seen before. These miracles, however, were but an opening act for the giving of the Torah at Sinai, where it wasn't just Moshe or one of the Avot who had an encounter with the divine, but every single member of Bnei Yisrael heard the voice of God. The excitement and the meaning of such an encounter must have been a spiritual paradise for Bnei Yisrael. But then, just a short time later came the betrayal, when the people violated the second of the Ten Commandments by building and worshiping a golden calf, even having the audacity to say, Ela Elohecha Yisrael asher ha'elucha me'eretz Mitzrayim. This is the God of Israel who took you out of Egypt. What led to the betrayal? Impatience. According to Chazal, Moshe told the people that he would descend Sinai after 40 days. During his time away, he would learn the rest of the Torah from Hashem in order to teach it to the people. But the people miscalculated or misunderstood what Moshe meant, and when he did not arrive as expected, they decided they could not wait and needed a leader, perhaps a medium through which they could communicate with Hashem, and they violated the mitzvah prohibiting idolatry without thinking twice. They faced adversity and lost patience. Shortly thereafter, Moshe arrived on the scene to see the people he had let out of Mitzrayim for the purpose of receiving the Torah, reveling in the shadow of the calf. Moshe too exhibited impatience by smashing the Luchot, the tablets written by God himself, to the ground. It's what happened next that teaches us about how to cultivate patience. If God had reacted to the plan going awry as Bnei Yisrael and Moshe did when experiencing adversity, he would have immediately destroyed the Jewish people. But what did he do instead? He taught Moshe the 13 attributes of mercy. He told Moshe that he is, among other things, Erech Apayim, slow to anger. And he modeled that behavior for Moshe by not destroying the people. Being patient is a godly trait, but it's important to note that it's not always easy, even for God himself. But since he modeled it for Moshe, Moshe was able to effectively model it for Hashem later on when situations arose which tried his patience. Take, for instance, when the spies brought back a slander support about the land of Israel, the land which God had promised Avraham and was now ready to give to his descendants. And it was accepted by Bnei Israel, who expressed a desire to return to the bondage of Egypt. Hashem had had enough of his rebellious people and informed Moshe of his desire to destroy them and start over again. Moshe then said, Ve'ata Hashem, Erech Apayim, and now you, God, are slow to anger, in effect reminding God of what he had taught him at Sinai. When the people you love disappoint you, be measured in your response. Don't be overcome by these feelings and act rashly. Have patience. Hashem agreed and backed off his stated course of action. And this relationship continues throughout the Torah. When Moshe loses his cool, Hashem reminds him of the need for patience. And when Hashem is disappointed by Bnei Yisrael, Moshe asks him to be Erech Apayim. This provides us with a model for our children and students. Patience is difficult. None of us are patient all the time. But if we take the cue from Hashem and Moshe and effectively model Savlanut for our children and students, they'll be able to effectively model it for us when we need a nudge in the right direction. Like the study of Torah, Tikkun Hamidot is a lifelong endeavor. On the occasion of the upcoming anniversary of the giving of the Torah, may we all merit to effectively model positive Midot for our students and children.